We've got a lot of projects happening all at the same time. 2020 Silverado Trail Boss with 10 to 15 thousand dollars of miscellaneous upgrades and improvements sitting not on the truck. We have a 2007 Silverado pre-runner build about halfway done. Front end setup pretty much ready to go. The rear end is sitting in that garage waiting to be installed. Behind those is 2,000 square feet of hopes and dreams also known as our dream shop build pretty much dried in ready to go for its exterior facade and i know what you guys are thinking this guy has a severe undiagnosed case of add and the best thing he can possibly do to focus in and finish one of his stinking projects is to buy another so without further ado may i introduce you to the latest project on the channel and the most expensive project on the channel to date the black pearl And yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's a diesel. Our first diesel vehicle on the channel, Mercedes Sprinter van. Let's freaking go. Let me reiterate that this thing is absolutely humongous. It's huge. And there was a reason we had to build our garage door to the height that is on the garage currently, and it was because of this thing. This is a cargo van, which means besides a driver and passenger seat, there's nothing in here. It's a fully open blank canvas for us to do anything that we want with it. And this is the most expensive vehicle I have ever purchased in my lifetime. And I am not the driver of this project. This is my wife's project. I am just the free labor. Now my wife is amazing. She has put up with this YouTube channel for seven years. We've been making these videos for seven years guys and it's finally her turn to dictate to lead to manage a project and this is what she has chosen. She's always wanted a sprinter van build out. I know nothing about them so if you know about them i apologize i'm going to say the wrong thing all through this process but we're going to make the most epic sprinter van on this earth out of that thing right there but today's video regardless of how cool this thing looks isn't just about showing you guys the new sprinter van purchase we are diving right in to the sprinter van build of the black pearl Yes, my wife named the van. The goal of today is to find some rear seats off another Sprinter van, get them shipped out here, installed into our cargo van, drive across the country in that van, move in-laws back across the country to here. But unfortunately, we got scammed from an eBay seller and it didn't turn out that way, but we figured it out. So without further ado, guys, let's dive in to the build of the Black Pearl. Drink up, me hearty Joe ho Should we go for a drive? And guys, we're diving right into the mods. We actually have an entire pallet waiting for us about an hour up the road at a terminal. So we're taking none other than the empty cargo van at the moment to pick up the pallet. We have a lot of work to do in the next few hours because this thing is hitting the road very soon. This is Maui, everybody. Maui, this is your seat. The turning radius on this thing is phenomenal. Love it. I love it up here. Find the dock, get this thing loaded up. Hopefully the pallet fits in the back. All right, slide back a bit. There you go. Ah! All right. First load ever in this van and the dude damaged it. <laughs> Professional forklift driver. By this point, not even surprised anymore. Just live with it. So we're effectively okay, hitting the road so in less than 14 hours. And why wait till the last second to do a bunch of stuff to the vehicle that we're driving across the country? Most folks would think it's for a cinematic effect. And in reality, it's a skill that I've been honing since childhood called procrastination. 
Well, the first thing's completely obvious. We have this awesome rear seat from another Sprinter van out of somewhere in Indiana that we need to mount in. And unfortunately that is easier said than done because nothing comes prefabricated or ready for this. We bought this van, it's obviously secondhand. It's, however, it is a 2024 model year and we scored. We saved a ton off of MSRP you would get on a brand new Sprinter. It's got 13,000 miles. But the front windshield is smashed and the roof skin rattles to high heavens. So without further ado, let's dive in head first to Project The Black Pearl. I'm gonna put this one on the roof for a timeout for the boys. If they're bad, they go to the roof. Although they would probably see that as a reward, not punishment. In fact, I kind of want to do it. All right, so here's our three seat brackets, which we're going to have to mount to the bottom side here in our cargo van. And the fun part about this is where you mount it up is just kind of a thin gauged metal. So we need to go up underneath and reinforce the bottom side. That way in a worst case scenario case, the seat does not rip up out of the floor. We're gonna spend a little bit of time figuring out exactly where that seat is going. We gotta put the seat in a position to where when we do the final build out, it's gonna fit in here. With all the other plans that she has, she wants a little kitchen galley, a small washroom, bathroom, uh, a bed, a couch, and somehow all in this tiny little space. You wanna go ahead and fabricate that for me? Yeah? Okay. And it was about here where our project took a downward turn. The brackets that we purchased for these Sprinter van seats confirmed in the VIN number were from a Sprinter van ended up not being so. So the brackets weren't compatible with wherever this seat came out of. I did my best to see if I could modify that bracket to get it to work with this alleged Sprinter van seat, but it didn't work out. The van, didn't make a trip. So my relationship with Mercedes continues to go as expected. I'm gonna make myself feel a little bit better here. We're gonna run over, give you guys an update on the 99 Silverado build at Sarge's house and give them a little gift that's come courtesy of our sponsors over at Real Truck because we've got a Flowmaster American Thunder exhaust system to go on his open header, currently 99 Silverado that's torn apart in his garage. You can get that thing installed right now. Let's go. Let me open up this Retrax EQ bed cover. And as you can see, dad doesn't necessarily live in the open country. He is in a very suburban neighborhood running open headers on his V8 pickup truck. Oh, dude, this fence looks good. He was working on this fence the last time I spoke with him. Turned out pretty good. He's also got the meanest set of banana trees in the North Texas vicinity. My goodness, and there I Here's our subject at hand. 1999 Silverado 1500. You ready to throw an exhaust on this thing? Yeah. Stop driving your neighbors nuts with open headers. Oh no, man, they love it. New. Got a new toy. I stepped on that one and broke it. Got a new <laughs> No hood. Can't be protected anymore. Bring me up to date on what's going on with the truck. All right. You no, know, we primered the whole thing. Fenders, hood, truck bed sitting on the back porch. And then we thought we were ready for paint and OCD kicked in. Cracking going on on the roof. Yep. Under the primer. So I sanded it down again, primered it again. We should be good now. So we're on the second to third coat of primer on this thing. And we are now, we're now ready for paint. <laughs> It's been about a year and a half in this primered and deconstructed condition with that bed sitting on my mom's back porch, which she's thrilled about. And I wonder where I get my OCA from. Obsessive compulsive advantage, <laughs> not disorder. It's an advantage. The nice thing about it is if we ever flip over going four by four, it's gonna look good. It'll look good. Yeah. So about a year ago, we installed long tube headers. And ever since then, you've been starting it up, getting the fluids hot with open headers. So the goal today, 
courtesy of real truck but the Flowmaster exhaust system is to refine it it's not necessarily toned down it's gonna be more refined it's gonna sound better it's gonna run better my neighbors will love me You know, it's days spent like this that are some of my most favorites. And there's so many additional ways to bring your truck to life with real truck because whether it's bed covers, steps, or exhaust systems, days spent like this, spending time with family, upgrading trucks with the over 1 million parts and accessories to choose from, they're the best. Head over to realtruck.com and bring your truck to life. You know, I used to stand over here because this is where the exhaust was terminated, but now I gotta go in the back, hold on. All right, fire in the hole. It sounds good back here. Is it still running? <laughs> painting it. I'm gonna order the paint tonight, test it inside the fenders. So the game plan with painting the 99 is actually use the exact same paint code as this truck on that truck. So they are identical, interchangeable. We'll have Thanks. extra paint if we need it. Big thank you to Real Truck for sending this exhaust out. It's awesome. Don't worry guys, it looks super crooked. We still have to actually mount the rear bumper, the bed, everything on it. So there's gonna be a lot of adjustments coming for the final tweaks, but sound wise? Sounds tremendous. There's no exhaust leaks, which I was surprised. Big win guys. Let's get back to the Sprinter van. Let's go. Welcome to Southern California. We uh, didn't make it in the van, however, we loaded that bad boy up yesterday. It's 26 feet of all my in-law stuff. We got my father-in-law's GMC Sierra heading back home. But in this bad boy, Chevy 350 out of a 60s Nova. Getting this in was fun last night. Thanks to Harbor Freight. That time hit the road. Really sad the van couldn't make this trip. We're heading back home. I think I found a solution for those seats because apparently those seats aren't even for a Sprinter van. They're out of a Mercedes minivan. How we bought that, I, I, I don't even know. We're going to figure this out though. Well, safe to say, things don't always go according to plan. I would argue, actually, they don't go according to plan most of the time. And it turns out, after a little bit of research, the seats that we got for our Sprinter van are actually from a Mercedes Vito. I haven't even heard of that vehicle before, nor do they sell very many in the United States. So I don't know how in the world these seats got here. Welcome back to the crap show. So this seat debacle has been interesting because we cannot get the right seat brackets to go with this seat. The only ones that are available are in Europe and they're $300 each. And to get them over here will be $100 and it'll be weeks before we actually get them. The brackets will cost more than the entire seat combined. So I think I figured out a way to combat this using the original brackets and graded hardware. It's two and two on this side. Now this, watch your fingers. When it goes in, you drop it in and then you lock it in place. This little area is too small for that big post and I can't grind that down because I can't get behind it. What's nice about this is if and when this does work, we'll be able to use the original functionality of the seat, which will allow it to actually detach, rotate forward and come out of the vehicle without having to remove any back brackets. I hate your van already. Don't be mean to the black pearl. She's done nothing wrong. Front side. Okay. All right, second seat bracket, like so. There's a lock right here lock that so now this can't come out at all 
and then this side bends down and there's a striker right here. There we are. Ah, seat on bracket. Let's see. Oh, that's nice. So I'm not lifting that into the van tonight. That's gonna call it for tonight. We'll see you guys back in the morning in three, two, one. These build outs are kind of fun because it is a blank canvas to really do what you want. We're trying to space out the rear seat to the front seat so an adult can be comfortable back here. We have about 19 inches from where the edge of the seat ends and this front seat. And I've gone ahead and positioned our front seat to my driving position. See, you can make some long distance drives in this van. It is very comfortable. We got the seat latches to the brackets figured out. Now let's figure out how we're gonna mount those brackets to this van. <laughs> All right, so we've got our two support braces for up underneath. We've marked them where we're gonna pre-drill our hole. So we're gonna run the hardware all the way through the bottom bracket, through the floor skin to the underside, and then put a grade eight bolt and nut on the other end. And it's gonna mount that to the bottom side. But I did decide I'm gonna wait on welding this thing to the frame until my wife has fully decided exactly what she wants to do on the inside of the van. We do need to move the seat in the future. It is a lot easier to unbolt this and move it versus cutting welds. So we got a one and a half inch reinforced square tube here. We got a full plate here just because I can't fit a tube up underneath where that drive shaft comes up. And then this one has a two inch square tube here and there, all reinforcing these two mounting locations for seats. Woo, progress. All right, whoopsie, both brackets ready to go. I'm gonna go up underneath. I don't know how you're gonna hold the top end from spinning while I do the bottom end and then screw it all in. This wrench is yours. with me van. I don't need you fighting against me already. So this thing has Velcro on the bottom side, which is awesome because it holds the floor in place. Trying to get it situated is a pain. Yes. Checking these things off of the to-do list. Has its rear seats and the windshield is somewhat patched. And my goodness, this was a complete pain in the okole. Now, okole in Hawaiian is rear end or backside or can be interpreted as pain in the butt. This is my wife's project. We've been making these videos for seven years and it's finally her turn to lead and manage a project. This was a pain in the butt, but fortunately we got them locked down, mounted in, both car seats can strap down. And selfishly for this van, I'm very excited to be able to tow with this van to events coming up. We can tow our competition car with the van, actually stay in the van for the few days of the event, compete and tow the competition car home. But the last thing I'm gonna ask you guys, it's gonna be this roof skin. I wanna get an idea from you guys. What's my best bet 
to fix this. This rattles to high heaven. As you drive down the road, for whatever reason, there's not a seam sealer, there's no welds holding this roof skin onto these cross members. So literally as you go down the road, that's all you hear. So let me know in the comments below what's gonna be our best bet to seal this back. I was thinking maybe 3M tape, or we could go the more OEM route where we actually go buy the seam sealer and seal it ourselves. Right now, we literally have just like pieces of <laughs> packaging material trying to keep it from vibrating so badly. So leave that in the comments below. What's my best bet for fixing that roof skin? We have a ton more coming up. If you're excited about the van build series, let me know in the comments below. But until the next time we see this Sprinter van on the channel, y'all take care. Ahui ho. Aloha. Ah!